Hey guys, Tyler here. This video has been a long time in the making. I beat Blunarius on chimps mode. So during the original Blunarius, I did a self-imposed challenge where I beat it without banana farms, but I thought that was too easy because I just did supply drop snipers and then never uploaded the video because it was too easy. So I thought, why not beat Blunarius without income generation at all? But then I wanted to take it to the next level that was beating Blunarius on chimps mode. Now I didn't have time to do that because I had a huge vacation after the first Blunarius and I've been waiting ever since for a good Blunarius to do this on, AKA a beginner map. Now, since this is chimps mode, I'm gonna be showing a lot more of my strategy than just the boss fight segments. I also want to explain that this is a self-imposed challenge because there's no way to actually edit the rules of Blunarius. I'm stuck with what's given. So here's how I'm implementing the chimps rules. No continues, self-explanatory. You can't continue on Blunarius. No hearts lost. That just means can't leak a life. Keep an eye that 150 in the corner. It's gonna stay there. And there technically are ways to gain lives to cover that up. But you'll see over the course of this, I won't be using any. Plus, what are the odds of me being able to get back to exactly 150 lives with any of the life game methods? No income generation. That means no farms, no supply drops, no merchant ships, none of that. Obviously, I just have to restrict myself from using income generating towers. Now, there is something special with the Oban trees. I will not be using Oban's trees because they will give me extra income from the balloons they swallow. On chimps mode, they give the same amount you would get if you pop them normally, but on technically not chimps mode, because this is again self-imposed, it would give more money than you would otherwise. So I will not be using Oban's trees to farm money here. No monkey knowledge is self-explanatory. This Blunarius battle already has no monkey knowledge as a requirement. So that means this is the perfect Blunarius to do chimps mode on. No powers is self-explanatory. And no selling is again another one that can only be proved by watching the whole video. I don't sell any towers, not even accidentally. Now let's get into the actual strategy. This is an Oban Druid Dartly Gun strat. Oban was the required hero, but conveniently so because he synergizes very well with Druids, gives him pierce and range, both very helpful things. And one of the first things I did was to get a 032 Dartling Gun because the first Blunarius only has 20,000 HP, only a BAD on round 40, no big deal. And But the real difficulty of it is its ceramic clusters inside. I needed a tower that would be good later that's also really good against ceramics and the Hydrocopods fits the bill cleans up ceramic clusters pretty well, but you still need to have a lot of open druid action going on. Otherwise, you're not gonna even get to the ceramic clusters in the first place. So thankfully you are able to afford all that and keep affording stuff during the fight. I'm buying a jungle drums village now and I'll be working my way towards a pop lust because I now have my six druids and six druids is all you need in the druid squad. Now, as these ceramics pop out, you will see it's still not a piece of cake. It's a 032 Darling Gun. It's three piercing explosions. It doesn't matter. This is a lot of blooms. And they just kind of keep going and targeting it. I mean, my positioning wasn't exactly the best, but hey, I'm kind of winging it. This is my first attempt. I only barely take down the first ceramic cluster. So the next ceramic cluster is going to spawn later in the track. I'll have less time to pop it, which means it's more scary. Let's hope this pop plus that I bought, it gives plus 15% attack speed to all the druids in his range can actually help so crossing my fingers on that it should also be noted that i don't have much uh, heart of vengeance is that what it's called buff on the druid because it's chimps mode but here comes the ceramic cluster balloons are getting very far and like all good chimps runs this is going to be a gold border <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna quit out and continue this because that's not against chimps rules and uh, It behaves a little differently, but not too differently. It's about the same I just get slightly luckier dartling spread There's a bit of spread there and I realized that if I just done what I'm doing now earlier aka getting a Berserker brew on the dartling gun the ceramics really wouldn't be that much a problem So if I just swapped around the pop lust and berserker brew order I had I would have no problem at all beating the ceramics I'm sure of it because as you can see this wave is taken out a lot more cleanly and with less time so no doubt in my mind that this would have been more fine but it's cool we're still doing good we're taking down the blue Narius. we got a good setup let's go jumping ahead around 60 is blue Narius level 2 75,000 HP and I've got a little bit of a change all my druids are now pop lusts my village is upgraded to camo detection 
And until then, I just had Dartling Gun as camo detection, which was actually really good for early game because the camo villages cost money. I needed it to beat the tier one balloon areas. Okay, I also got a 420 alchemist, so I could be buffing the Dartling Gun and one of the druids consistently. The one druid, the alchemist, this buffing is of course going to become the Avatar of Wrath. But until then, I'm saving up. How well do I handle the tier 2 Blunaris? Well, the ceramics are certainly easier, somewhat, but 75,000 HP is a lot, and if this Blunaris gets far and unleashes the ceramic wave, I could still be in trouble. So I'm crossing my fingers that I can beat it quickly enough. I'm also crossing my fingers that none of these random balloons that spawn somehow sneak past my druids. I don't think that's going to happen, but it could. The second ceramic wave did make it pretty far, but thankfully I took it down. Third ceramic wave is going to be a lot longer along the line, and again, I can't use trees because of the income generation it gives, so I have to beat this raw. So I'm hoping it's not going to be too much of a problem. Just waiting for them to edge around. This map does have a lot of time where the druids don't attack Blunarius, but when Oban levels up further, he'll give them further range, so it should be good. Final ceramic wave, and it does get taken down, meaning we'll take down the Blunarius. Now, I want to do a bit of a stat check. The Poplust means that all the druids get plus 75% attack speed, but because this is Chimps mode, I'm missing out on a major Heart of Vengeance buff. Without losing any lives, the Heart of Vengeance, the third tier druid, will give all druids plus 10% attack speed. That's not bad, but if there was any lives lost, that would increase the druid's attack speed to up to an additional 90% for a total of plus 100% for that upgrade. I can't lose any lives, so I can't make use of that upgrade. My druids are a lot weaker than they normally are when it comes to this. So even though you may have beaten Blue Nares with Druid Squad, that doesn't guarantee that druids alone are going to get it done. They're going to need some help. Now it's time for the tier 3 Blunarius. I just got Avatar Wrath, so I imagine this should be a piece of cake. Here we get to kind of see the base level for the Druid Squad, because it's not going to get any more powerful than this until I get stuff like maybe Overclock. But without any further buffs, we do decent against this 350,000 Blunarius thing. It's not too bad, but it is still taking a while. So scaled it up to 3 million at the final tier 5 Lunarius, we might still have some trouble ahead of us. That being said, there's still going to be plenty of money generation over the course of this. And the Druid Squad is not going to be my only DPS. I have this Dartling Gun here. Hopefully it can do something. And do something it will, because now is an MAD, the other really good Blunarius Destroyer. So I got two main sources of DPS, it's round 100, and I still have money to earn. So let's see how this thing does against 750,000 HP of Blunarius. And you know what? So far, so good. It looks like the phases themselves are doing well. We're already bringing it down to about half HP. I'm also going to work on some overclocks in the meantime. Just kind of having that target away and not really worry about things. The OMGs that spit out totally aren't going to destroy me. Um, actually, they might. Good news is I already lost Black Border, so this is inconsequential. All I really needed to do was change my Avatar of Wrath to first. I forgot I had it on strong and then buy back the Overclock. Maybe Overclock the Avatar of Wrath just in case. It's a little bit better at cleanup than the MAD. That thing sucks against Super Ceramics. But yeah, leave your Avatar on first. Don't put it on strong or you'll die like that. Unless if you're quick enough to save it. And it seems that 750,000 HP goes down pretty quickly. But we still have a bit of ways to go to 3 million. We have now reached 3 million. It's the final phase of the Blunarius Tier 5. 3 million HP. I got my defense set up. Hopefully I can take it down. If I do, it'll secure a Chimps Mode victory and ultimate glory. Now, in addition to the uh, Avatar of Wrath and the MAD, I have a MIB and three overclocks. Now that the Blunarius has reached the range of the Avatar of Wrath, is time to unleash maximum damage on it and so far we're not doing too bad i mean there's a long track and this has a lot of hp but at least it looks like we're putting up a bit of a fight hopefully hanging in there we'll see how quickly you can get to the first bad phase now the three overclocks is suspect because i am actually able to buff both of these towers with full uptime of overclock with just three overclocks how does that work well i'll explain it shortly after we see this bad pop out around the first bend, probably decent pace, but again, it's the third BAD we're worried the most about. That thing is gonna be tough if it spawns too late and I just can't take it down in time. Good news is I do take down BADs themselves very fast, so now the three overclocks. How does it work? Well, here's the math. 
An overclock will buff a tier 5 tower for 30 seconds. The overclock also has a cooldown of 45 seconds. So 90 seconds is the time for three overclocks to take up the period of two cooldown lengths. That means three overclocks can keep two tier 5 towers buffed at, at all times. And it's not that simple though, you have to stagger the ability timings. How it works is you activate one overclock on the first tower, wait 15 seconds or one third of that tower's ability cooldown, and then activate the next overclock on the next tower. And then you wait for the first overclock to wear off and you activate the third overclock on the first tower. And then as soon as the overclock comes back, you just buff the tower that has been buffed. You basically just alternate between the two tier five towers. Uh, in this case, MAD, then Avatar of Wrath, then MAD, then Avatar of Wrath. I even messed up a couple times just because I forgot what I buffed last, last because I was thinking about something else. Maybe thinking about Call to Arms, which I got now due to the money saved, getting three overclocks instead of four. A little bit extra damage here. But even messing up, the order doesn't matter. You just got to go back and keep alternating. That's all that matters, that you alternate the towers. And Call to Arms is huge. It's an additional attack speed buff to these towers. Could really use it. Final BAD of about to pop out now the real challenge if i destroy this fast stuff this blunarius is going to be taken down in chimps mode possibly first ever at least first video that i know it's pretty sweet the bad gets taken down and we do beat it in chimps mode it's pretty nice now if you want to verify that i did adhere to the chimps rules you can just do this strategy yourself and you'll see that you'll have about the same money that I have, probably the exact same money, which would be impossible if I had somehow cheesed my way during the middle rounds. So I was surprised. I thought this was gonna take a bunch of tries, but nope, first try, Chimps Mode, Balloonarius. Now I'm hoping that there could be a Balloonarius battle on hard instead of medium, but hey, I take what I can get. So yeah, that was that was a wonderful challenge. I hope to find more exciting Balloonarius challenges in the future. Kudos to Ninja Kiwi for releasing it without monkey knowledge to really make this possible. And I'll see you guys all with the next Balloonarius challenge. Have a wonderful day and peace.